Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to be looking at how to interpret our pitchforks. Now, so far, we've really spoken about how to draw our pitchforks. So this is going to be a little bit more practical. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to actually draw the pitchfork on a chart, which here we've got the example of Exxon Mobil. And then we're going to look at what information that pitchfork is giving us to try and identify trade opportunities. So first of all, when, once you've pulled up your chart, in this case, as I say, Exxon Mobil, we're on the weekly time frame. First thing you want to do is make sure you've got the correct scale that you want to analyze. I actually always use the log scale, which can be toggled here at the bottom right here on TradingView. So this is the log scale. If we just click it, you'll get the linear scale, which is as such. And if we just expand that, we can see that the price action is really going up in a curved parabolic move. So it's an exponential move, which is often hard to analyze with the tools that we have. What the log scale does is it, it kind of smooths out the data. So you then get more of a straight line move going up here rather than a parabolic curve. And that's particularly useful for our indicators such as trend lines or in our case, pitchforks. So now we've got the, the data here. What we want to do is pull on our pitchfork. So we select our pitchfork tool using magnet mode. You want to get as close as you can, first of all, to the major low that you want to where the trend really starts. So this is the bottom of the trend. And then we'll look at the first wave up, which is the move up here and the second wave down, which is this move here. So these are our first three pivots, our first, second and third pivots. What I'll then do is I'll just zoom in on this to fine tune the pivot so that they are exactly where they need to be. So you want to look at the lowest point, you would literally want to go to the wick. So you can see the wick is up here for the second pivot, I want to make sure that that's right on point. And then same for the third pivot also, I can then zoom back out. And then what I want to do, I want to make sure I've got the correct pitchfork. Now this is looks looks pretty good. This this is an original pitchfork. We know that because the origin of the median line is at the same point as the first pivot as we previously discussed in the earlier tutorial. But let's just take a look at the other pitchforks just to see how they fare also. So we've got the original pitchfork at present. Let's have a look at the shift. The shift as you can see, is just not holding the trend at all. And the modified shift also not holding the trend. So certainly the choice of pitchfork is this one, the original pitchfork holding the, the trend beautifully here. And you can see quite nicely the median line is shooting through the kind of middle of the price action, which is great. It's looking almost like a line of best fit. That doesn't always have to be the case. It doesn't have to be the line of best fit through the data points, but it's always a good sign that price action is adhering to this pitchfork if the median line is running through the, the center of all the price action. Uh, also, you want to look out for if, if it isn't the case, you want to make sure your other lines are getting respect whether it's your upper median line, lower median line, upper or lower warning lines. So I'm very happy with the choice of pitchfork here. I feel like it's following the trend very nicely. The next thing that I would look at is where is trend being determined? Is it the lower warning line? Well, I reckon you can probably argue that we can identify a loss of trend here, i.e. a loss of this upward move before hitting the lower warning line. And the reason is we've never actually tested the lower warning line. You can see here, we've come to this point here. This is probably, this is the lowest within the pitchfork we had gone for about 50 years because this pitchfork starts at 1970 and we're going all the way up here to 2015, let's say. Well, let's say top of a trend being here, 2014. So what's that, 44 years. So it's a huge amount of data that we've got here. At this point here, we came down to this point, which I would just, just looking at it, I see it as half way between the the uh, lower median line and lower warning line so what i would just do you need to do this when looking on the higher time frames you'll get a lot of white space between your lines so sometimes an additional line can be useful so i'll pull up the settings and in this case i would pull on the 1.5 because as i say it's looking like the halfway point i generally stick to these intervals of being multiples of uh, one standard deviation so it could be one two or three standard deviations usually i don't go further than the second standard deviation and then i would look for the halfway point so the 1.5 1.25 can be considered 0 0.5 0 0.75 0 0.25 all of these lines can be considered in this case the 1.5 is the one that is of particular interest you can see we hit it almost to the t so this is the point that i would define as the bottom of our trend now you can see the next time we really we really test it is here next bit of information is what happened after hitting this point did we go up in a, a very explosive move to the upside well it started off at explosive 
which is understandable we've hit the bottom of the trend but the resultant price action is very overlappy and looks very corrective that's where Elliott wave comes in and I've done a tutorial on that using Elliott wave I would be able to determine that this is looking very corrective which gives me a big red flag it's telling me that this is likely to come back on itself and likely to take out this low very soon now if it is to do that it would be taking out the 1.5 line and in my opinion that would be the break of the trend so already I would have my alert to this chart because of the fact that we've seen corrective price action off of the bottom of the trend here which tells me that the next move down is probably going to break the trend so in my opinion the, the loss of trend was at this point here here at around 90 dollars this was your early sign that we're losing the trend so this is how i would extract the data from this chart okay in my opinion at this point it was likely that we were going to take out this low and we were likely going to correct the whole move up Okay, so that's your first leg from here all the way up to here. We need to correct that move. So then we want to see a correction of that that is regular in terms of time and price. And you can see the result in price action, it was a really big sell off. This, don't forget, this is the log scale. On, on the linear scale, it looks like this. This is a huge sell off. If we go back on our log scale, we can actually see the percentage drop. This is altogether from our all time high a 70% drop. So it's a huge drop. It's a massive drop in price action. Okay, and the, as I say, the early sign for this was at around $90 at this point here. So how can we potentially capitalize on such a move? Well, one argument is putting a short once we lose the 1.5 line, and then your stop would need to be at the previous high above the previous high reason being is once you come down you can always come back on yourself before continuing the downward trend so what i would usually do is i would look for the first leg down and then i'd look for the correction of that and, and that's this point here so this is your correction of the initial leg down that is opposing the major trend so again what you can do here you can put a smaller pitchfork you can look at this correction here because once that correction is finished, that's where you want to get in. So now what I would do, I would zoom in on this bit of price action here. I would again pull up my pitchfork tool, first pivot, second pivot, and third. So clearly this original pitchfork, let's, let's take off our 1.5 line because it's not needed here. So the original pitchfork, I don't like it. First of all, we're not coming into the median lines. Straight away, I do not like this pitchfork. Uh, so I always like to see the median line tested. So this is the original pitchfork. Then I would change and have a look at the shift pitchfork. The shift looks pretty good, I must say. Yeah, I like the fact that it's hovered around the median line. It's then hit the upper median line to the T after a three wave move. So I really like the way that plays out. Again, just looking at the other pitchfork, which is our modified shift. What do we think of this? So again, we hover around the median line. Fair enough. That's OK. But it completely disrespects the other lines before turning around. So it's kind of just come into thin air before turning around. The shift is much better because it hits the upper median line and then turns around. It's a much better way of determining the trend over on the shift. Very nicely respecting the upper median line. Now, where would be the loss of trend? in this shift pitchfork. So we've set the top of the trend as being the upper median line. So I would argue the loss of trend would be a break of the lower median line. So at this point here, and this is around $80. So this is where I see the trading opportunity. I would consider a short at this point, at this point here, once we come down to around $81, and my start would be at the previous high because this is where we're saying our corrective move is finished so we could still come back on ourselves and in fact we did up to this point here so as i say i wouldn't put my stop just above the lower median line thinking oh we've broken the trend there's no way we can come back up yes we can we can still come back up the point is that the corrective move finished here so that is the only place that a safe stop can be put here we're just getting the confirmation that the trend has been lost now strictly speaking most people will tell you that the pitchfork trend is only lost when once we lose the lower warning line in this case so that that is the, that is true and certainly once we lose the lower warning line which we did here you've got more confirmation that this downward move is going to develop the only thing I'm throwing in here is a way of trying to determine a loss of trend earlier because very often that will allow you to get in at a better price. So it is taking on a bit more risk, not waiting for price to action to break the lower warning line. But from a probability point of view, the probability significantly increases that, the t that we're going to continue the downward trend once we've lost this trend because the upper median line was setting the upper parameters of the trend. Also, you can apply Elliott wave. From an Elliott wave point of view, you've had a three wave move up and you then started to come down 
very likely you're going to take out this low very soon because of the three wave nature in this move. So that's why Elliott wave is particularly useful in combining with pitchforks. So this is your this is where I see the trade opportunity. Now if we zoom out, we can see what happened since breaking this point. Yes, we came back up, but as I said, the stop would be up here because this is the confirmed corrective correction of the first leg down. And then we come all the way down. Okay, this is this is the trade opportunity. This is what this was the reward for the short. Now, at what point do you think that the trend has finished? Well, first of all, as I said, you've got to look at the fact that this has come up. It's a seven tier move. So you need the, the correction has to be a, a drawn out move with a regular proportional duration in terms of time. So this is from 2014 through to 2020. So six years, okay, that's a, a, a small fraction of our 44 years, but it's still a sufficient correction. And, it's, and on top of that, you want to look at FIB Fibonacci relationships also to look at the price drawdown so we go from our low all the way to our high and you can see here we've come down and hit the 0.236 which is a minimal I'd say a minimal retracement required before confirming that a completed correction has, has formed so that has occurred and so yeah you would always want to take profits once you come anywhere close to the 0.236 so the trade really is from around $80 down to around $40 that's where our 0.236 fib retracement is so that's that's the trade right there that's the opportunity and so that's just really identifying what information the pitchfork is giving us and where are the trade signals